Hi, this is Nick Lindberg. I work at Red Path Consulting Group and I run the nonprofit team here. I'm also a Salesforce MVP. I'm here today to have some fun with y'all and showcase the nonprofit starter pack. Now, if you haven't heard of the nonprofit starter pack before, what the nonprofit starter pack is, is a app that's built by more or less the Salesforce community to be used for nonprofits using Salesforce. And so it takes the Salesforce core functionality and makes it more geared towards nonprofits. So it's super cool in that essence. One of the things that I really like about the starter pack is that it it is really the core Salesforce. And so I'm on the homepage here and in the starter pack, and you'll notice that this looks just like any other Salesforce org. And so that's really kind of uh, really nifty on that side of it. Now, let's take a grand tour of the starter pack and kind of show you some of the features and objects and things like that that exist. So let's start our journey on the Mickey Mouse page. Now, Mickey Mouse is a contact. Um, one of the things in Salesforce is that there's always usually a contact and then they are related to an account. And now in the starter pack, that's no different, but essentially how that contact and account are possibly related in different ways. And there's some different models um, that exist, um, namely the household account, the one-to-one -one model, and the individual bucket account. And I could probably spend a whole two hours talking through those different models. Instead of doing that, I'll, def I'll highly recommend reading some of the articles that are on the Power of Us Hub, as well as taking the trailhead, the nonprofit specific trailhead. Um, we'll post these as links as well. Um, I highly encourage you reading up on those, and that way you can kind of explain more what the account model is. Uh, essentially, the best way, as I was describing, is that a contact is related to an account. And so there's different ways to do that. In this in this example that we're using today, we have the household account set up. And so within that setup, there is a household that exists. It's a and it's an account record, and it essentially relates everyone that's a part of that household together. So Mickey and Minnie are a part of this household together. So that's essentially what a household account is. Now, some of the other cool features about the starter path that I really enjoy are some of the related lists or the additional objects that are added to the contact page here, namely the relationships and the organization affiliations. What relationships do is it relates contacts to other contacts. So we can relate contacts to their coworkers, their friends, things along those lines. So it's a great way to kind of create a relationship web that exists. The other thing that exists are organization affiliations. Now, if you think about it, a lot of your supporters are likely work for an organization, possibly on a board somewhere, volunteer at multiple places, and are an advocate for another organization. So there's multiple organizations that they're affiliated with. And what this allows us to do is essentially to relate that one contact to multiple organizations. And then on the flip side, we can go to that organization page and see all of the contacts that are related to that. So that's a really cool tool that exists with the starter pack. Some of the other items that exist in the starter pack are that it uses opportunities and essentially introduces a few record types. Now a record type is essentially a way to segment information as well as adjust different page layouts and there's like a lot of other things that the core Salesforce record types do um, that make it really cool. Um, so the starter pack introduces a few, namely the, the donations, the grants, and memberships. And within these record types we can as I was mentioning, adjust page layouts, adjust the related lists, the items that are listed down below here, and do just different things like that. Now, in this case, some of the other objects that are introduced in the stutter pack would be JU allocations. So JU stands for General Accounting Units Allocations. And so a lot of times maybe you're getting a donation or grant and that that money is going to different purposes and maybe there's different restrictions to those. Within the GAU allocations, this could be where we can track how much of that money got allocated to different items. So in this case, $500 was donated to the Cartoon Retirement Fund and another $500 was to Unrestricted. Now since everyone's favorite allocation is Unrestricted, let's go to that one. And essentially what we can see here are that it gives us some roll-ups. So we can say how much has been donated to this, how much, when was the last time, what was the first time. We can kind of have some key stats to get at this information. So that's um, what general accounting units are. The other item that is introduced in the starter pack would be payments. Now with payments, what are really cool with them 
are that maybe someone made a pledge and they're going to make multiple payments over the course of a year um, or even years in some cases and we want to track those payments on this one donation so what payments does is it allows us to record payments and kind of track how much was it, how much, well, how was it paid, things along those lines. And so it's kind of a cool way to see kind of almost accounts receivables, how much is paid and paid, how much has is still outstanding. Now, one other record type that I want to show you here would be the grants record type. Within the grants record type, you know, so there's a few new fields that are introduced. And the main reason why I want to showcase here would be the grant deadlines. And the cool thing with grant deadlines, how it works is that if you think through a grant, there's different steps of that grant cycle as you're trying to apply and different kind of milestones. What these deadlines allows us to allows you to do is essentially manage those grants and the due dates revolving those different grants. So maybe you're typing different ten different grants at the same time. This would allow you to see what's due now, um, today, what's due tomorrow, things like that. Once you get awarded those those grants, essentially the other cool things that are that you can track up in this grant information section, some of the key information is about the grant. So for instance, when did it start? When does it end? When's the next, uh, there, is it a renewal? Things along those lines. So those are some cool nifty features that exist. One last feature that I want to showcase would, in the opportunities house would be the reoccurring donations. And what reoccurring donations do are that you know you likely have a donor that maybe makes a monthly or a quarterly pledge or something along those lines and you want to track those and group all those together well reoccurring donations allows us to create all those donations together and allows us to then by grouping them we can track how much has been paid when's the next installment things along those lines so it's really nifty to allow us to do that so that's reoccurring donations another object that um, is added to the starter pack one other feature I just want to quick highlight here is that there's this contact merge button and essentially what this what this merge button allows us to do is it allows us to merge different records together so I can go find if there's duplicates of Mickey and merge those together. Um, merging contacts in Salesforce is you know I kind of basically have to have an app and this is a feature that comes out of the box in the starter pack so that's really nifty. The last feature I want to show you today would be the nonprofit starter pack settings. What the nonprofit starter pack settings does is it essentially allows us to adjust the different, you know, it kind of is what it is, it said, what it says. It's allowing us to adjust the different settings related to the starter pack. So here's where I can state what what household or what's using what a model, what account model I want to have, maybe create opportunity naming conventions, uh, set different contact roles, or even how do those contact roles play into some roll-ups that exist on the contact and organization page, so doing hard credits, soft credits, things along those lines. And my personal favorite, the health check. And what the health check does is it goes and runs against quite a few different parameters. I want to say it's 62 or 63 different parameters, and essentially it goes and looks at your your database and tells you tells you how things are looking. It's kind of like you going to a, getting your car, doing a hundred point inspection on on your car. It essentially, is doing just that, and it's telling you if there's anything that we should be looking at or try to fix within the stutter pack within your data model. So here's we're noticing a few errors that came up, uh, namely a few uh, records on our contact org. Thanks for joining us today to walk through the different settings in Salesforce and the Stutter Pack. There's a lot of cool tools that exist in here. We'll be posting us, uh, some cool additional links in here, such as a link to the Power of Us Hub, which is a great Salesforce community specific to nonprofits, as well as the Trailhead, which is a great interactive approach to learning Salesforce and um, including um, a few nonprofit Stutter Pack trails as well as user groups. There's always a there's a lot of local user groups all around the country. We'll love to have you get connected to one of those and so we'll post a link to all the different user groups across the country for you to get connected. Thanks for joining today.